Good morning, Fellowship families, and welcome to Worship on the Lot. You may notice that I'm not inside this morning, uh, but you may be at home. You may be on your computer or your phone, and we just want to say welcome to you. We're excited that we've got our family, Fellowship family behind us and joining us from wherever you are. I can just feel the love out here today. I got my got my trusty lawn chair ready to go. Got some good armrest uh, cushioning going here. Got my sunglasses and we're just excited. We're excited to be together as a church family and praise God today. In fact, some of you I know are on Facebook this morning. Let me hop over there and see who all I can see. Oh, Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Just want to say hi as you're watching from home. I know you have a few kiddos at home. Say hi to them from Fellowship Kids for us. Jordan, want to say hi to you this morning. We're excited to have you guys with us. And hey, Facebook is social media, okay? So let's be social. Will you take a moment and share this service right now on social media so that others in your friends or family group may experience God in a new way this morning, all right? So hit that share button for us. And speaking of being social, all right, we've got a few questions for you this morning. We want you to interact on the comments on Facebook or on the website. And we got a theme going, so these questions are themed, okay? All right, question number one has to do with your cars. We've got lots of cars out here behind us. What is one of your first cars? Or we'll even take your worst car that you've ever had, all right? I want to see this, so interact with us in the comments. I know for me, I had a friend who her first car, her mom made her drive a tan and white minivan, and that thing was a monster. It was hideous, and that is how she rolled into high school every day. I got to take lots of rides in that car. It was rough, but we had fun with it. Okay, the second question, I want you to think about this lot right behind me. Take the best guess you can, all right? How many parking spots do you think are in our north parking lot only? Just this lot behind me, all right? No Google Mapsing it. Don't look for the aerial view. Just give it your best guess. We'll share the answer to that later, all right? And then question number three. It's a little hot out here today. We want your best guess. How hot is the hottest day recorded in Dallas's temperature? All right? Again, no Googling. Just give us your best guess. Okay? Chat it up in the comments. We're excited to get started. We're glad you're joining us from home. We'll see you in a few minutes for Worship on the Lot.
my Fellowship Dallas. You guys, we made it. We are at Worship on the Lot. Yes, give a big clap with one hand if you've got your umbrella in the other. Hey, I want to say good morning. It's hot out here, but this is amazing, y'all. My cup is full. I can, I can feel the energy. That's not just the heat from the concrete. That is your energy right now as our church family, and I just love it. Right now, look around. Give somebody an air high five, all right? We out here, y'all. We are out here, and if you are at home, we want to say welcome to you as well. And I just want to make something abundantly clear. You are not sweating. You are sparkling, all right? You are sparkling. You look good. It is enhancing your look today, all right? I love it, guys. And I have never been more excited in my life to get outside and sunburn with my church family, all right? I got SPF 1000 on. Don't worry about me, okay? All right. Well, hey, we are worshiping on the lot. So we would be remiss if we did not take this opportunity to use the vehicles in our lot right now to make a little noise. So here's what I want you to do, all right? Are you ready? If you are outside of your car, I want somebody to go get close to your steering wheel because we are about to honk. I'm going to count us down, all right? Somebody, run, go get by that steering wheel, all right? Because here is the deal. Yes, I see you running, very good. We got people over there in Vickery Meadow. We got these people in Park Lane. They need to know that we are here this morning, all right? Are you ready? Are you ready? Hands on those wheels. Here we go. One, two, three. Let me hear it. Woo! Yes, fellowship. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. Very good. Wow. Y'all, that is it. Hey, that's what I call a hallelujah honk. Am I right? All right. Very good. I can tell a little bit about how some of you drive from that honk right there, okay? Some of y'all did the little toot toot. You're the polite driver. Some of y'all kind of laid on it. Y'all better watch out for them on 75, okay? All right. That's our hallelujah honk for the morning. Well, hey, when you got here, you should have gotten a worship guide. You're going to need this for the lyrics because we are about to worship on this lot. So look in that guide for all the information that you need. If you need to come inside and you get too hot, please do. We've got restrooms available inside. We don't want anybody getting overheated. We just want to have a good time out here. Okay, guys? All right, sounds good. I got one more thing I want to say to you, all right? And that is thank you. I'm so thankful for this church family because over the past five or six months, we have seen things in our city and our nation shut down. But one thing we have seen from this church is that you guys have continued to pour out with the way that you have given sacrificially of your time and your resources. I'm thankful for this family. Yeah, that deserves a clap. We have been able to support people in Vickery Meadow, people in our refugee community, our ministry partners across the globe, and our own church family because of the way that you guys have given, regardless of the circumstances. It's amazing, and it's such a testimony to who God is in your life. If you want to give this morning, you can go online to fellowshipdallas.org slash give, or you can go on our Fellowship Dallas app where we also have information for today as well and find the giving section there. Okay, guys? All right, well, like I said, my cup is full right now. I am ready to worship. Noah, what do you think? Are we ready for worship on the lot? I'm ready, go ready. All right, let's go. Take it away, Noah. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Noah. I'm so, so glad that you've joined us this morning. How many of you are grateful for the hope that you have in Jesus? Isn't he so good? How many of you are grateful that the Lord is still reigning even in the middle of COVID right now? I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to spend some time reading through Psalm 96. We would love for you to join in with us. We're going to read different chunks of that and we're going to sing. We're going to sing a new song together this morning. It's going to be amazing. But let's turn our hearts, let's turn our affections, let's turn our devotion and our worship this morning to a God that loves us. Let me open us in prayer. God, in the middle of this heat, in the middle of this Texas summer, we praise you. We worship you because you alone deserve it, Jesus. The reason that we are gathered here is to lift you up. And God, we know that when we gather to do this, when we gather to worship, God, you change our hearts, you shape us, and you mold us. And we can't wait for that. But the reason that we're here is just for your glory and just for your praise. God, come and meet us here in the middle of this parking lot. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get going, y'all. 
Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For he, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, and strength and beauty are in his sanctuary.
till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, oh, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, yeah, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, But chains break out the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I wasn't open. But you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. You call my name.
Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. surrounding me, let it break at your name still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still.
Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes. For he comes to judge the world. He will judge the world in righteousness. And the peoples in his faithfulness. I want to read verse 10 again. It says, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. I want to sing a new song, church. This is uh, the last song we're going to sing together before Kirk comes up and talks about this passage from 1 Thessalonians about being grateful, about rejoicing. But I want to end just saying this, that God, you reign. You reign above everything. You reign above COVID. God, you reign among racial unrest. You are Lord above everything that is on this earth. And we put our complete trust in you, Father. Let's sing to him. sent the darkness running we have this faith you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise sing it out you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise Sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest grave. Remind yourself of that you truth. Sent the darkness running. Thank you, God. Out of an empty grave. We praise you, Jesus. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest grave. You sent the darkness running. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. 
nothing better than you. Jesus, you reign. One more time we sing, you reign. You reign above it all. You reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart, there is no high in Jesus, you reign above it all. Let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song. Sing hallelujah to the everlasting one. There is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. You reign above it all. You reign above it all. Oh, Jesus, you reign. Let's pray together. Father, that is what we are here Amen. proclaiming this morning, that you reign above it all. That you're over every sin that we've ever committed. God, you have power over that. You have power to forgive us. God, that in your grace you are making things new. You are bringing new life into the hearts of your people. So God, we say you reign. We give you access to our hearts. We give you access to change us, to mold us, to shape us into the image that you have for us because God darkness trembles at your name and you reign so we worship you this morning God and we pray this in the name of our mighty Savior our King who gave his life for us and your son Jesus Amen Amen, amen. Good morning, fellowship. It is uh, thrilling to be together this morning. I have been uh, looking forward to this day for several weeks, and uh, my heart is just full. Joining those of you joining us this morning here in person and those online, so uh, praise the Lord for this morning. I want to just begin with some thanksgiving. There's a whole lot of people that did a whole lot of work to pull this thing off, and so I want to thank our facilities team and our worship team and our communications team and our staff and a whole lot of volunteers and our tech team that had to uh, bring all this out. So can you just show your appreciation for those folks? So yes, hallelujah. That's either horns or the rapture's about to happen, one of the two things. They even left room, just in case y'all were led, they even left room for a heavenly mosh pit up here in front. So if you guys feel led at any point this morning, uh, man, dive into that. I, uh, uh, as no one I talked about this morning, what we recognized was this was going to be a, a tremendous opportunity for us to have an extended time of worship, to really lift our voices to the Lord and to praise and worship Him and to declare His Word. And the more I thought about this morning, the more I realized that this was an opportunity for us uh, to experience and really be reminded of what we have available. This practice that we have available that, that will uh, glorify God and renew us. Uh, over the last six months, there's a word that's been thrown around a whole lot. It's become part of our just common vernacular, and frankly, I'm sick of it. And you may be sick of it too. You ready to hear the word? It might make you groan. The word is pivot. Just saying it kind of gives me the creeps. Pivot. It's this idea that we have to turn and head in a new direction. And I know that every single one of us have had to pivot in a whole lot of different ways. We've had to pivot how we do relationships and how we do school and how we do work and how we do church and how we manage our finances and how we do long-term planning and even maybe even how we get married. That's the pivot. And pivoting is, takes a lot of energy and it is exhausting. And it's so disruptive that, that I heard it caused a church to come up with this crazy idea of having a worship service in a parking lot in Dallas in the middle of August. That's how disruptive pivoting is, and I'm, I'm sure that all of you have felt the weight of it. But this morning, I want to talk about a pivot that isn't bad, because not all pivoting is bad. In fact, this pivot that we're going to talk about this morning brings honor and worship to God, and it rejuvenates us. It does not exhaust I want you to think about this scenario playing out today. If you're out and about and you uh, walk into someone's path and you just pause, stop them and say, 
hey, I have a word for you. Rejoice and be thankful. How's that going to go? Probably not very good, right? At best, you're going to get mocked. At worst, you may even get punched in the face because most people aren't going to respond to that because most people think that trial and difficulty and pain cannot simply coexist with joy and thanksgiving. But that isn't true for the follower of Jesus. That isn't true for believers. In fact, in times of trial, Scripture tells us that there is a pivot that can be made, a threefold pivot that includes what we're doing this morning. And what this pivot is, it's an alternative choice. It's an alternative direction that all of us can take as opposed to just letting our life be dictated by our circumstances. And while it's a pivot that's commanded by Scripture, actually, it's it's more than that. You see, this is a pivot that, that, that will honor God and is going to revive our spirit. And as Noah told you, it's found in 1 Thessalonians 5. 16 to 18. This is what Paul says at the end of that letter. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. At the very end of this letter to the Thessalonian church, Paul has the audacity to tell them to be joyful people and thankful people to have their life defined by joy and prayer and thanksgiving. This is a church that's experiencing a lot of hard times. They're experiencing persecution from both Romans and Jews. They're, they're having material needs uh, that, that are, they're struggling to meet. But yet Paul looks at them and says, rejoice, pray, thank, be thankful. Not just a little bit, but in all things, always, without ceasing, in all circumstances. Now, Paul's not dismissing the, the pain that they're going through, the difficulty they're going through. He affirms that and empathizes that with, throughout the letter. But what he's saying is that even in the midst of that, their, their lives can be defined by rejoicing and prayer and gratitude. And some of you may be asking, and it's an understandable question, Kurt, how is that even possible? Your pain probably isn't from persecution, but, but so many of us are experiencing things like fear and loneliness and hardship and grief and hopelessness. And I want to acknowledge all that. I pray for you all regularly in these hard times. But yet for those who are followers of Jesus, who are in Christ, God's word says that our pain and our difficulty can coexist with joy and with prayer and with thanksgiving. So let's just spend a few minutes talking about how we can make that pivot and the impact that it can have. Joy is one of those words that we kind of understand. We maybe more understand it when we experience it, but, but I've always defined joy as delight in the presence and the promises of God. That joy is an expression, a reaction in our heart that recognizes everything that we have in Jesus Christ. That it remembers and responds to the magnificent truth of the gospel that should never get old to us. That should never stop coming out of our mouth. That we have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. That we've been declared righteous and forgiven of our sins. That we have entered into an eternal relationship with our heavenly father. And nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God for all of eternity. And maybe that's what you need to hear this morning. Maybe that's what you need to be reminded of this morning. You see, here's how joy works. When when we're stressed and we're anxious about the uncertainty of all that's going on, joy arrives when we hold fast to the certainty of God's promises. Joy shows up when, when we're thinking, I don't know when this season is ever going to end. I think it's going to go on forever and ever. But joy shows up when we remember, no, the kingdom of God will go on forever and ever. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you are a citizen of that eternal kingdom. And joy arrives when we realize the value of our life isn't determined by a what, but by a whom. That our life is defined not by the circumstances, but by who we are united with and who we belong to, namely Jesus Christ. That's what joy responds to. It's, 
It's an opportunity for us to make this pivot when we remember those things and we pivot from hopelessness to hopefulness and we pivot from despairing to rejoicing. And so this morning, if you're here, if you're joining us from home and this idea of rejoicing is something that you struggle with, preach the gospel to yourself and be quick to preach it to one another to remind yourself and each other what we have in Jesus, the glorious and joy-inducing truth and good news of Jesus Christ. Joy is also a fruit of the Spirit. If you, if you know Scripture, you know that it's a fruit of the Spirit, and it comes when we abide, when we make our home in God. And one of the primary ways we do that is prayer. So it, it's not surprising that Paul says, Rejoice in all things and pray without ceasing. Make joy be a significant and foundational part of your life. And one of the ways that you get to that is because it's a fruit of the Spirit that you would spend time with the Lord. Because prayer is presence. It's a declaration of dependence on God that we want to enter into fellowship with Him, that we want to be with Him and we want to let Him minister to us. I had a wonderful conversation this week with a woman in our church who uh, just the first week of school, uh, uncertainty in her job, uh, not, don't know where any of this is going to go. And she said, you know what, Kurt, I've got to begin every single day in the presence of the Lord. It is the desire of my heart. It's the most significant and important thing I can do. And if I don't do that, I'm going to be toast for the rest of the day. See, she wakes up every single morning with a decision. Is she going to face her day on her own, or is she going to make a pivot first thing and be in the presence of the Lord through prayer? Is she going to allow the Spirit to work in her heart so that she can then go into the day prepared to take on whatever because she is reminded who she belongs to, that she experiences the joy of fellowship with God, and that she can press on? See, I know, listen, I know some of you are just hanging on. But this passage is a wonderful reminder that you do not have to go through that alone. There is a good and gracious and loving God who is doing this, saying, come to me. Come be with me. Let me minister to you. Let me love you. We don't have to do that alone. And if, and if you are struggling with that, how do I enter into the presence of God? You know, we've had a, 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 a podcast, a prayer podcast that our Life Groups team has put together. I want to encourage you. As you hear these words of Paul and hear my words and say, I don't know if I can get to that place, that that maybe is your next step, that you would just go and absorb what is going on and that what's being said in that podcast. And then the third, the third pivot, as we pray, our prayer should be full of thanksgiving. See, rejoice, and the way that joy comes is in the presence of the Lord. And when we're in the presence of the Lord through prayer, prayer can be full of thanksgiving. And it's this expression of gratitude for who God is and what he's done in our life. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Everything that you have that's a blessing in your life is from God above. And thanksgiving is this conscious decision, this conscious pivot to focus our life on our blessings and the fact that our good God is working all circumstances for our good, even seasons like this that are intensely painful. See, when we focus just on our suffering, just on the difficulties, we get out of balance. Many of you know that I was an accountant when I started my career. Any accountants here? Rock and roll. All right. The number one rule of accounting is your debits must equal your credits. If they don't, you are out of balance and the entire system breaks down. And it's the same way with our heart. When we get out of balance, if we focus on just the difficulties of what's going on in our life, we're going to get out of balance too, and that can possibly lead, lead to us breaking, breaking down. When you and I are in seasons of difficulty, listen, we can pivot. And when we pivot, we don't ignore the difficulty of life, but what we do is we focus on God's blessings and his work in our life. And that does two things. That gives him the worship and the praise and the glory that he is due most importantly, but it also changes us in the process because grateful people are happy people, and there is never a moment in your life where you don't have something to be thankful for to God. No matter what is going on, there is always something to thank God for. Now, it's easy for me to get up here and just say these things, and, but my, my heart in this is the same as Paul's. None of these pivots deny or dismiss our pain and suffering and the difficulties of this time. And we worship a God who loves us way too much to be indifferent to the difficulties of our life. 
And for, for some of you, your, your joy and your thanksgiving may sound more like a, a whimper or a whisper. And that's okay because that's a pivot. That's a small pivot that acknowledges our God is greater and stronger than anything that is going on in our life. And that the circumstances of our life do not define who we are. There is something greater than your pain. And he is the Lord, our God. And sometimes even in the midst of our pain, the whisper and the whimper means we are hanging to God and that we are trusting in him. Now, I don't want you to miss the last thing that Paul says because we have these three pivots and we can forget about the last part of this. Because he says this, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, we, we can hear that and think, oh, this is the will of God, this is a command, and we better do this. And That's not the spirit of this. See, as we consider these pivots, even in the most difficult of times, the thing for us to remember is that God loves us and everything in his will is for our best. God doesn't ask us to do anything that damages us. God only asks us and commands us to do things that glorify him and flourish our life. He knows there's seasons like these. He, he's not caught off guard. He's not surprised by what's happening. But he loves us enough to give us a remedy in these times. And so my question for you is, do you believe that? Do you believe him? So I'm confident if we make this pivot, God will get the glory that he is due. You and I will be rejuvenated and our spirits will be raised. And a world that is having a hard time and is discouraged and is disheartened and is maybe even hopeless will be curious about a people who are living through the same circumstances, but what they see is joy and thanksgiving, and they wonder why, and they pursue us. That's why I'm so excited to start a neighboring series that we're going to start next week. And so here's how I want to close this morning. I, I, I'm going to ask you whether you're here in your cars, around uh, family, or you're worshiping from home. I want to ask you to rejoice and to offer prayers of thanksgiving where you are. I'd love for you to do that out loud. I'd love to, to be able to encourage one another to hear the voices of the saints being raised to the Lord. Turn and to tell someone why you're thankful to God. And Noah's going to play over you while you do that. And then we're going to close with a song called Grateful. So that we can lift our voices to the Lord. So that we can make that pivot this morning. I love you. It is so good to see all of you. I cannot wait for us to continue to be together as God leads us to do so. Give thanks.
set my feet on higher ground. So here I stand, you are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. our service this morning. Father, we are grateful for who you are. Let us not forget the battles that you've won. May we always rejoice. May we always give thanks for you, our risen Savior. Jesus, we love you and we praise you this morning. Can we all say it together, church? Amen. Amen. We'll see y'all soon. God bless.